So I, uh, back in November, Pastor Jaffa comes. He gave me this prophecy that I'm going to start a healing and a deliverance ministry, especially to people who are mentally ill. I have not forgiven him for that yet. <laughs> that was not the prophecy I wanted. I, I don't really like hanging around mentally ill people. I don't know any people who do. I'm sorry. But, you know, God actually cares about that stuff. And, and it's not actually, like, an evil that the person is doing that they're having problems. It, it's, a, it's a problem. And you can't, like, cast it out. You can't say, in the name of Jesus, you're going to come out of her. Come out. And you can, well, you can do it all day long if you want to. But there's a problem that's not spiritual exactly and it's not physical exactly it's somewhere in between so i want to talk to you today about the ceiling for your healing because you know what your soul what happens in your soul is going to determine the ability of your body to be healed in many places your soul is a part of us that we don't really talk about too very much. And sometimes I think we're kind of embarrassed to have. Oh, I don't really have needs. I don't know. I mean, I mean, it's not me. You don't, don't think about me and my needs. I'm not that important. I'm just going to... You know. No, we actually all have a soul. We all have an important part of us. And I'm going to start out with a couple of things about... Uh, first, about, about God. This isn't an accident. God himself is a community. From... Before there was ever time, God was a community, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is, when we say God is love, that's what we mean. That means forever, since forever, God has been in love with Him. There's three of Him. There's three persons in the, in the Trinity. One God, but three persons, and, he, and they love each other. And so when we say God is love, and when we say love is important, what we, we really mean is we're going to be like God and love like he loves. Because then he created us to be the object of his love. Here's the deal. I want you to understand that it's not just that God is love. It's that he can't do anything else but help. He can't help but love you. He totally, totally loves you. Did, would you come up and, uh, Brian, and give me uh, give some backup on the, on the keys? Because that's just awesome <laughs> when you do that. Um, yeah, thanks, Brian. I appreciate it, bro. Um, so you can diagram it. Uh, did you put, put that thing up? Yeah. So look, this is a diagram of what the, uh, what, uh, you can, a vision of what God is like at the top. And you can order these differently, right? But I'm just saying the most holy, divine, you know, God-like you can think of as the Father. He seems kind of remote sometimes, but he's the, he's the Father, right? And then we have Jesus, the son, who came and walked here and got dust on his feet and had to go to the bathroom and had people talking bad about him and stuff like that. And we have the spirit who he left with us who connects us to God. So that's, that's sort of how I see God. I want you to know that we are each a community too. God made us in his image. What did that mean? Do, uh, does this, was this what God looks like? Well, actually, yeah, he does look like this. This is what God looks like on earth. This is what God looks like on earth, right? You are what God looks like on earth. But we're all a community. You can diagram it almost the exact same way. Look, if you, uh, if you got the image there, uh, we are spirit, soul, and body. Our spirit is the part that relates to God. Our body is the parts, our earth suit. We walk around in it. You can't walk around in your spirit the same way you walk around on your legs, right? We are on this earth, but in the middle between the two, there's this soul. You know, the bottom part here, the body, that's material. We can see it. It's extended in space, right? The top part, the spirit, how do you measure it? How much does your spirit weigh? How long is it? How tall is it? I don't know. There isn't any of that. It's in the spirit. But in the middle, there's this soul part. And we, sometimes we neglect that part. Um, but I want you to understand that that part is important because that's, let's see, uh, next, next slide here. That's where we have a lot of problems. 
a lot of problems that the Bible really talks about, but we don't always address. So I want you to know here in the middle, in the soul, that's where your mind, will, and emotions are. And if you want, that's kind of where your personality is, where your brain is in your body. It kind of overlaps that part. The soul is the part of you that makes you you. And I call this the decision part, the decision zone, because, okay, here, here's how it goes, right? Your body lives on this earth and really likes pizza and sleep and drugs and sex and whatever else. It just wants to do whatever. It's like, yeah, I want that, right? That's what your body, your body just wants to do. Let's face it, if we were just animals, we would be just bodies, and we would just do whatever we wanted to do, right? Your spirit is like always facing God. It's like in heaven looking at God's face all the time, and it doesn't have any, it's like, why would I want to do all that messy stuff that's going to separate my relationship with God? I want to totally serve God with everything. Look, I don't care if you are strung out on drugs right now in a ditch on the side of the road. You have a spirit. If you're saved, your spirit has, is sitting before the throne of God, and it is serving and loving and praising God with all its worth right now. I don't care where you are. That's who you are. Your spirit is your raw identity. But the decider in the middle decides, am I going to side with the body or am I going to side with the spirit? And we got that decision every single day. And every single moment of every single day, we decide that. And I am sorry to say that I do not always decide with the spirit. Sorry. I eat that extra slice of pizza, right? Or I don't go to the gym, or I don't actually talk to the person who looks like they're really in need right now, because I just really don't want to, right? Because I'm I'm looking at things from my body perspective. I'm like, you know, I'd be late if I did that. But you know what? My spirit cares about their spirit, because all of our spirits are connected to God. I want you to know that, do you see that attacks up there? The attacks, that is where the world the flesh, and the devil. They're the enemies of your soul. And that's where the devil can attack you. The devil cannot attack your spirit. Your spirit's in heaven. The devil got kicked out from there. He got kicked out. He's done. He can't get you in the spirit. But he can get your your soul. He can attack your soul. He can attack who you are. He puts all kinds of things in your soul. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life at 1 John 2.16. That's taking place in the soul. And this is not, look, I want you to know, it's not about what you do. Does that make sense? It's not actually about what you do. It's about what you think. That's where the devil wins or loses. You can do all kinds of things that people might say, well, you're not supposed to smoke, you're not supposed to drink. What if by smoking and drinking you were actually part of winning someone to Jesus because they can't see you if you're not part of their crowd? How about that? Yeah, that's not real popular in the church, right? I may not get to preach again, sorry. But uh, it's, it's not popular to think that all these bad habits. But you know what? It's not about what you do. It's about what you agree with. It's about what you think about what you do. If, if I can do things and be completely free of guilt and condemnation and shame, you know, if, if, if it's far further in the kingdom of God, there's, we got a lot of leash that we can go on. Jesus was absolutely free. But if by doing those things, it kind of condemns me a little bit and I kind of feel like I'm less and I'm not, or if I sit back in the back and say, well, I'm not one of those holy people sitting up front. If that's what's happening, then your flesh is getting in the way of your spirit through your soul. It's a problem. Let me give you some examples here. Well, maybe I have something else for a first here. Look, in this, in this, in this world, your soul will be wounded. It is actually not your fault that you get wounded. Sometimes it is, okay? If you stand in front of the car and and you get run over, that is actually probably your fault. If you jump off the building, yes, you will get hurt. So there's stuff you can do to hurt your soul that's just stupid. I'm sorry, shouldn't probably say that that way. It's it's not right. (laughs) We do dumb stuff, right? You can get, but you can get wounded 
living perfectly, making the perfect decision every single time, and someone will reach out into your soul and attack you. And you can't help it. And you're gonna get wounded. The question is not whether you're wounded or not. Everybody here has been wounded. Every, can anybody raise their hands? Oh, I've never been wounded. If so, see me afterwards. I will wound you. You'll understand and join the, <laughs> join the club, right? You'll be good. <laughs> you're gonna get wounded. The question is how do you treat your wound? Right? So if I get a scratch or a, a cut, I put a Band-Aid on it, but I don't leave the dirt in there, right? You wash the dirt out because the dirt infects us. Why do we do that with our souls? We put Band-Aids on it all the time and we leave all the dirt in there and all the time we're saying, I can't believe he did that. I can't believe she said that. I can't believe... And we're just, you got all the dirt down in there and we just don't want to give up the dirt. We're like thinking about, well, that made me feel so bad. And he knew that. And she told me, I can't believe what they put on Facebook. And I'm like, blah, 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 you know, or Instagram. For those of you who are, you know, younger than me, it's Instagram now. I can't believe they posted that to Instagram. I just got an Instagram account. So, I, yeah. I, yay. Uh, <laughs> there's hope for me, right? If I'm, if I'm like grousing about that. So, look, do you give the hurt to Jesus? And say, you know, Jesus, when you died on the cross, that you didn't just die in your flesh, you died in your soul too. And you, you sent your spirit straight to hell and you suffered there and out of the presence of God. And you, you already suffered for this, Jesus, so I just can't take this stuff. Please take it. Is that what you do? Because that's like washing the wound and getting it clean. Then you can put a band-aid on it and, and talk. Uh, the, the way that you should about, about then, then you can go around saying yes I'm healed in the name of Jesus but don't you go saying nursing your hurt feeling sorry for yourself and just looking for sympathy you know look there are people there are people I'm not going to name any names right some of them might be here I'm just going to say that who are always about, oh, would you pray for me? Because, you know, I'm really being attacked right now and I just can't know how to do it. I can't know how to deal with it. And I just need someone to pray for me because I just don't know how to. And it's okay to need prayer. But some people are like that all the time, right? They're like, I got an F on my final exam and I feel bad about this. And so I just, and, and, and I just need prayer because I'm being under attack right now. No, you didn't study for your test, Okay. So there are people who live in feeling sorry for themselves and, and like saying, so let me just ask you this. Please do not raise your hand, okay? Don't, okay, you can raise your hand, Daryl. Okay, yeah. it's Daryl. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> do I feel sorry for myself and close and look for, look for sympathy and then close that dirt into that wound and then stick a bandit over it and say, oh, I'm healed in the name of Jesus, brother. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I'm healed. No problem. Or do I give it to Jesus? What are you going to do? Right? So let me move on. I'm going to run out of time. Let me give you an example of a healthy healing process. Take a look at David. What did David do? Let me give you the story. This is from 1 Samuel 30. I won't ask you to look at it now, but I would ask you to look at it and think about it a little later on. Okay, this is what happened. 13 years, David's gotten chased out of his house and chased all over the countryside by a wicked king, even though David has been anointed as king of Israel to take Saul's place. Saul is chasing David all over the countryside, persecuting him, trying to kill him on multiple occasions, right? So one day... 13 years after that, he's living in the country of Israel's biggest enemy, the Philistines. He has a little town called Ziklag, which is just part of the Philistine territory at that time. And he has 600 men who are following him, and they're serving the Philistine king because the Israelite king won't have them. He'd kill them. So they go to serve the Philistine king. The Philistine king says, you know, I'm going to go, in, go into war with Israel. I think you might turn your back on me and, and betray me, so I'm going to have you go back home. He goes back home to find out that the Amalekites, raiders, have come and taken his whole town, burned it to the ground, stolen everything, taken the women, taken the children, taken the livestock, taking it all away. This is a bad day. Have you had a day like that? I doubt it. But I have not, I've never had my livestock stolen because I've never had livestock. Uh, no one's ever come to my house and, and burned it to the ground, taking my wife and kids, okay? That's a bad day. Now, there are people who have that happen. But get this. 
The next thing is, it's, it says the next thing in verse 6, it says David's men were conspiring to kill him, to stone him to death. Okay, 600 men, they've all gotten their wives and children stolen, and they're blaming David for it. And David's already having a bad day, right? And they're blaming him for it. You know what it says in verse 6? I want you to get this. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. That's what that's the first step. To be healthy, strengthen yourself in the Lord. Look, we don't have the strength to do this. We can't make this on our own. There's none of us here strong enough to make it. I can't make it on my own. Don't call me super Christian. I'm just a piece of Jesus here on the earth. But you know what? I can't make it without that. I have to give it to him, right? I got to give it to him. So on your worst day, find strength in the Lord, right? Next thing he does in verses 7 to 8 is he gets the priest and he asks God, what do I do? Because everything's gone. I mean, as far as he knew, everyone was killed. He had no, no, he's like, God, what do I do? Do I chase after him? And God says, chase after him. He says, will you give me victory if I, if I, if I do it? He says, yeah, I'll give you victory. Uh, so he takes the necessary action. That's the third thing. He does what God says. And then when he has victory, he's not like, ha ha, I got it all. I got all the stuff now. Ha ha ha. No, he actually sends gifts to people. He shares God's goodness. That's crazy good. If you want to know how to live life, look at David. He's awesome. But if you want to know how not to live life, look at Saul. He's a great example of how not to do it. Saul made a lifestyle of jealousy, hurt, and competition. He made it his lifestyle. He had the sudden anger over little things. This is in 1 Samuel chapter 20. Verse 30, it says, he got so angry at his son, Jonathan, for siding with David. He, he yelled at him and he called his, he says, you son of a perverse woman. You, okay, you married her, so come on. <laughs> but yeah, he's like, he's like, don't you know if, he, if David lives, you're never going to get the kingship? So he got really mad over a little thing. David was excused from dinner. Boom! Do you find yourself doing that? Do you like go off, laugh the handle, and oh, I can't help it, I don't know. Maybe think about this. This might be a soul issue. Sudden anger over little things. Storing up bitterness. Keeping score. Do you keep score? Well, I did this for her, and all she's ever done to me is that. And I, I can't believe, you know, after all I've done for her, after all, and she just had the nerve to say that, and I always do this, and I do this, and I do that. Am I keeping score? Have I forgotten the score at Calvary? Have I forgotten the score at the cross? Jesus only ever did good for me, and I crucified him and blamed him for everything I've ever done. And he sat there and said, I did it for me. So let's not keep score, okay? Because the score is not really in our favor. Right? But if you're keeping score, that might be an issue. You get paranoid about another person's success. David was succeeding, and Saul's like, I have to kill him. I have to kill him. He was his best captain. He was his son-in-law. He was his son's best friend. I have to kill him because he was paranoid. You get paranoid? You think people are like actually plotting against you? I mean, we don't like to use the word paranoid, but that's a problem, right? If you think that. If you think everyone's out to get you, you're probably wrong because you're already doing a great job yourself. Just saying. You repay good with evil. That's what Saul did. And here's another one. To choose silence or violence rather than solving the problem. Okay, here's a great example. Right. Are you upset, honey? No. I'm not upset. No. Well, can you talk to me? Not right now. I think I have a headache. Okay, that's not just women. I just want you to know. I may have seen this once in a while, but, but, I, but this, I, this is not... Men do this too. We get really snitty and we're like, no. 
That's choosing silence rather than solving the problem. How are we solving the problem with that? We're trying to punish the other person. How are we solving the problem by punishing the other person? Okay, it's not any better to go to violence and say, you did this, you did that, and just explode. All over everyone. That's not good either. Neither one of us is solving the problem. And you know what that should tell you? I got wounds in my soul. I got dirt in those wounds. And I'm trying to fix it by holding myself together. And all I'm doing is holding the dirt inside. And it's killing me. And so I'm going to kill you. That's what that says. Do you see that in yourself? I'm not asking you to nod your head right now, okay? But please understand that every single person in this room could nod their head with that, okay? including me. I have lived there for years. And I'm telling you, it's not a happy camp. It's a bad place. All right. And then when you find yourself, you find yourself stuck. You feel stuck. I hear so many people, I'm just waiting for my blessing. I'm just waiting for my breakthrough. I'm trying to get my breakthrough. Are you stuck because of you and your own stinking thinking? You know what? When you pray, Angels of God come and they deliver the answers to your prayer and they're sitting right above your heads right now. And they can't get through your thick skull because you're keeping score and you're trying to get your own way and you're and you just can't you're just not receiving because your soul's so wounded you can't have the blessings God's giving you and he wants to give them to you so badly. But you're like well, I can't fight. And 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 God's just like it's right there. You asked for it, I gave it. And you're like, God, why don't you answer my prayers? He's he's like, look up, it's right there. It's right there, grab it. You find yourself stuck in addictions or obsessions, which is what Saul found. He was addicted to music. If he didn't have the music, he would just blow up, right? He was obsessed with David. He had anxiety and depression. Okay. Look, Christians don't like mental illness. We don't even like to admit that it's possible for us to have it. Oh, no, I'm, I'm going with the Lord. Brother, I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm good. Oh, yeah? Well, you're, you're taking, I don't even remember the names of some of the medicine. You're, you're taking, uh, you, you know, oxycodone or whatever. Yeah? Okay. Maybe, maybe there's some soul healing needs to happen there. I want you to know inner healing is a name for the process, for a healthy process of dealing with soul wounds. Everyone needs it. I need it. And I'm going to tell you how it works. There's four major steps to inner healing. Follow Holy Spirit. Follow Holy Spirit, number one. Don't go off on your own into your hurt. You'll get lost there. If you, like, spend a lot of time going, what happened to me? You'll get lost in your own hurt. Follow Holy Spirit. Here's how you follow Holy Spirit. You ask Him to lead you. He's faithful. He'll do it. Ask Him to lead you, and then go where He goes. Don't, like, explore there and go where He takes you. Don't go to the thing you think is your worst hurt, because it probably isn't. It's probably something deeper and earlier and more poisonous that you never actually fixed. And he knows. So follow him. Ask him to lead you to the place in your mind where you're stuck and where you're hurt. And follow him there. And then here's something to do. When you get there, remember, you're safe. You keep holding on to his hand. And you ask him to tell you what's wrong. Don't tell him what's wrong. I was... I, I was in the situation. Let's see myself in my situation. Let's, I, I, there was a, a woman that I, that I was helping through this, and she could see herself as a little child being abused, right? And it was ugly. I asked her, ask Holy Spirit, what are you feeling right then? And she's like, I'm terrified. I'm so angry. I'm so ashamed. Those are feeling words. Here's what's not a feeling word. I was attacked. That's about you attacking me. I was betrayed. No, that's about someone doing bad things to you. What were you actually feeling? Ask Holy Spirit to help you name it. This is really hard for us men because we just, like, we're either happy or we're mad. (laughs) There's not much in between, and there's no degrees of mad. We're just mad. And it's just not right. We're mad. 
Women can tell you 36 different words for why they're upset with things like that. It's awesome. So if you're married, ask your wife to help you with your vocabulary. But meantime, Holy Spirit can really help you to, to figure it out. And some people like to just like to visualize this nasty thing in them like this ball of goo or like a tumor or something. That's identifying the problem. When you're there, I want you to feel that hurt, to really feel it, right? And then the second step is give it to Jesus because the truth is he already took it and he doesn't want you to have it. He paid for it all. Look, if he paid for it, why are you holding on to it? Why are you paying for it too? He's, he's not going to say, ooh, I don't want that one. That was ugly. No, he's, he already went through the ugly. He just wants you to give it up. So you got to say, Jesus, would you take this? I don't want this anymore. Sometimes people want their hurt. Do you know that? Because it empowers them. They're like, if I have this hurt, then I'll have the power to take revenge. Look, you're not an avenger, okay? Hurt will not help you. Give it to Jesus. That's step number two. If it was caused by your own sin, and this is something you ask Holy Spirit to, did I, did I do this? Was this me? That's the time to repent, all right? Not everything was caused by you, but some things, that's where you say, hey, I actually did that. I was wrong, sorry. That's a great place to do it. Third step, let the father restore you. This is the father of the prodigal son. He, he, he's not sitting there with his arms crossed. He's sitting there with his arms out, waiting every day for you to come back. This is our father. Ask him to restore you. And what I like to do is I like to say, God, I have this, I, I, I felt so wounded and, and so, I felt so ashamed. Okay, God, would you give me something in, re in replacement for that? If it's shame, I'll ask for honor. If it's fear, I'll ask for peace. If I don't know what to ask, I'll ask Holy Spirit, what should I ask for? Because I need something different than this. And he'll tell you, because he's good. He's real good. He gives good gifts. Take them. Let the Father restore you. And then last, repeat this if you have to. So this is what I do with people. And we're going to do this in a minute if we have time, hopefully. Yeah, well. Um, ask the Holy Spirit to take you back to that place one more time. Hold his hand and walk there. And ask yourself, what do I feel now? It's probably going to be something different. If you felt ashamed before, you might feel anger now. Okay, let's go deal with the anger. Let's follow the Holy Spirit, give it to Jesus, receive from the Father. Follow the Holy Spirit, give it to Jesus, receive from the Father. Until you can go back to that place and you're free. Right? And then tomorrow, when Satan comes and attacks your soul and says, and you're like, oh, okay, it doesn't mean you're not healed. It just means you're healing. This is the process. After you're healing, you got to pursue God like your new drug. And when the, heal the pain comes back, you go at it with, with what God has given you. You were healed. By his stripes, you were healed. Body, soul, and spirit. You were healed. This is what the Bible says, folks. It doesn't matter how you feel. It's just true. And you, how's your self-talk, right? Are you saying, oh, I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure I'm, I'm healed. Yeah, you are healed because that's what God said you are. I'm not asking you whether you feel healed or not today. I'm asking you to receive from him. And this is a process. Follow Holy Spirit. Ask Jesus to take it. Receive from the Father. Repeat it as often as you need every single day of your life. Look, if you were thrown out of the hot house when you were three years old and lived on the street by selling yourself and living on drugs and all kinds of horrible stuff like that, you can still get freedom. And it might take every day for a year. Okay. You can still get freedom and you can still be what God has made you to be. Now, we're going to have, we're going to, we're going to do altar call here very shortly. This is what I want you to do. 
I want you to go in and ask yourself, am I acting like Saul? Do I like hate people who love me? Okay, then it's time to ask the Holy Spirit. Would you show me a place where I'm hurt? Give it to Jesus. Receive from the Father. And if you're having trouble doing this over, there are people in this church who can help. So uh, Maria, if you'd stand up. This is Maria Opet. She does a lot of inner healing work. She can help. Maria tells me that mostly teenagers come to see her because adults don't have problems. Pride does not get any better when you get older, I'm sorry. Look, I can help, Maria can help. If you can't get to Jesus on your own, let somebody hold your hand. But uh, if you will, let's go ahead and close now. I'm gonna close with some prayer. Father God, I thank you that you've already taken care of all the stuff that we're going through. You're so good. And we just receive it right now. So Holy Spirit, I ask you to guide us. Be our guide. You know where the hurt really is. And you know where the healing is. And Jesus, you already died for this stuff. We don't need it anymore. We want to give it to you. And Father, we're asking you for new stuff in place of our old junk. Give us new things. We commit to be the people of God. You've made us. Because you love us and because you deserve it, we give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Come on, let's put our hands together for Glenn. Before we're going to go into the ministry time, I want us, everybody just to bow your head and, and close your eyes. If you're here in this place and um, in a moment we'll, in a moment we'll have an altar call in ministry time. But before that, if you're here in this place and um, you don't have a relationship with the Father, you don't have that closeness with God, maybe you had it before, you lost it, you walked away from God, you walked away from church, maybe because of some hurt, some pain, some struggles, some things that enticed you in the world and now you're here because you got invited you saw Facebook posts Instagram posts whatever reason you're here for and God is knocking in your heart and you need to come back and give your heart to God maybe because you already got a lot of hurts and pain in your life and this is kind of your your stopping point or your last bus stop whatever your case may be God is waiting for you right now God needs you God loves you he paid the price for you and he wants you to come home or maybe it's your first time or second time you just got invited and you don't have a relationship had and did not have a relationship with God and God is calling you as well he is your father he is your creator he is your maker there's a void in your heart that you might have been seeking or trying to fill with other things but no one can fill it outside of him because like I said he is your father he is your maker he is your creator and without him that for you that void in your heart cannot be filled if that's you either one category just lift up your hand and we want to pray for you if that's you right now this is the altar call for salvation we'll have an, a ministry time here in a bit but if you need to give your life to Jesus if you need to make your life right with him at this moment this is your moment this is your time this is your opportunity don't wait any longer lift your hands and we will pray for you as a church and we will introduce you to the greatest person in this entire universe just lift up your hand and we will pray for you in Jesus name if you're watching us on live through this broadcast then you need to give your life to Jesus just comment below say I need to receive Jesus and one of our moderators that are, are monitoring right now our sites we will respond to you and we'll pray with you and minister with you this is your moment this is your time this is your opportunity to get right with God life is short life is not promised to live out the fullness of days life can end in any moment and any time make sure you are right with Jesus make sure you are right with him so that your eternity is secured because it's the most important thing in your life in Jesus name in Jesus mighty name right now we're gonna go into a song of worship if you need to do that if you need to give your life to Jesus just come to my my right and we will pray with you in Jesus name the rest of us if we can stand up
things in your life that you feel like you're you're struggling to break through there's like the things that God mentioned things that quickly anger you maybe there's certain things that trigger you that you get paranoid or or, or or you know there's hurts there's bitterness and it's hard for you to let go maybe you went through some rough childhood you got abused maybe you want you were in in some um, bad relationship that caused you pain caused you hurt and now your current current relationship is suffering because of it we're gonna we want to open this altar for you we have a team that are well equipped to minister and help you go through the process of healing minister to your soul get you healed so that you can receive a, a physical healing because you know been in ministry for some time I've noticed one thing a lot of times physical healing is tied to emotional wound if there is an emotional wound, if there is bitterness, if there is unforgiveness, if there is emotional pain, the trauma that you went through, oftentimes it manifests itself in the, in the physical wound. Something's wrong with your body, you're constantly getting sick. You go from one sickness to another. There's certain chronic diseases or, 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 or sicknesses in your body. And the moment I have seen, the moment people begin to release their pain and their inner hurt, soon after they receive freedom and healing in their physical body and so if you're here in this place and this message was for you you, you got certain things that undealt with come to the front we're gonna pray for you we're gonna minister to you and we're gonna believe that God will lead you and guide you to the process and bring you healing thank you for watching this content I know this was a blessing to you we would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell on our channel so that each time we upload something you can be notified don't forget to share this content with your friends and family and on social media. We're so thankful to you. Better is not good enough. The best is yet to come.